Two. Thank you. Resolution 122-13 urges the mayor to address chronic homelessness in Hawaii County. Request a representative from the mayor's office to apprise the council on potential strategies to address chronic homelessness within 40 days, 45 days after adoption of this resolution. Share issues and challenges the county faces in dealing with this issue and what measurable actions the council can take to address chronic homelessness in this county. Introduced by Mr. Kanuha, waived age SSFC. Thank you. Motion to approve Resolution 122. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Kanuha, second by Mr. Yoshimoto. Mr. Kanuha. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I just want to make a clarification in the beginning that it was never my intention to criminalize homelessness. So I want to state that right now that it's not my intention that to criminalize the, these um, individuals. I, I brought this resolution forward with the intention of dealing with certain problems, issues within our community that a lot of my res a lot of residents, a lot of my constituents are telling me that this is a big issue within my community. So I, I, I brought this resolution basically to say, uh, tell the mayor, tell the administration, we need to do something about this issue. It's, it's unfortunate when we have uh, I, I, I mean, okay, I'm not saying it's unfortunate. I won't go there. But I, I, I want to make clear that there's a growing problem within our community, and I don't know if we're doing anything about it. So to bring, so I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that the, the administration knows that we need to do, and I said this already, the administration knows that we need to do something about it, whether it's getting these individuals to the proper care that they need or getting them into a house that they need. I don't know. I'm out of ideas, and I wanted to make clear that we need to do something about this. So that's, that's my intention, and I'll yield and look forward to everybody else's uh, thank you, Mr. Kanuha. Madam Chair. Mr. Yoshimoto. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, I support Mr. Kanuha's resolution. You know, b basically, this is a problem um, that it's you know prevalent. Well, not only island-wide, but statewide and nationwide, and it's something that needs to be talked about. And so, you know, I think this resolution is a good vehicle to to um, start the discussion now. I know it's, it's been discussed uh, by the administration, by state agencies, and things. It'll, it'll probably take a collaboration of uh, everyone involved, meaning state, county, and possibly even federal, in terms of you know trying to tackle um, the situation because it it uh, it's a difficult one. It's not something that um, is easy to talk about, but uh, people need help and you know I think we as elected leaders have a responsibility to find solutions and so you know this is something that um, I think is needed uh, it's something that uh, I've talked about before in the past you know we've, we've tried to do things but um, you know it, it's it's something that continue, needs to be continued to work on. So, uh, Mr. Kuno, I commend you on bringing this forward. Uh, you know, there might have been some uh, misperception as, as far as your intent. I think you clarified that. I think it's a good thing, and uh, we look forward to the discussion that comes forward. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Poindexter? Yeah, I too support this um, because I think um, this urges the mayor to, is urging the mayor to address it. And what's happening is there are a lot of people who, some people say they're houseless or homeless, um, whatever way they decide to um, uh, reference that, is that we're bringing help to them or we're encouraging bringing help because there are a lot of people who um, are needing mental health services that we're not aware of. So this resolution to me encourages the county to work like with um, what Council Member Yoshimoto stated with other agencies and this will help those people who are out there um, who sometimes cannot even reach out for help because of their, either their mental illness or substance abuse problems. So I am totally supporting um, this resolution. So thank you so much for bringing this forward. Aloha. Thank you, Ms. Poindexter. Mr. Kern? Oh, Ms. Willie. 
Okay. Um, yes, and I appreciate that you brought this forward. Um, I want to say that um, after hearing a few of the comments from the public, I, you know, probably isn't written the most perfect way, and I happen to write things not always in the perfect way, so I appreciate that. But I think, um, such as the whereas the HUD defines chronically homeless as an unaccompanied individual with diagnostic substance in this, you know, we could all end up out on the street. I mean, I, and I think it could just be people losing jobs. I think that there's does there's more stigma here than um, I'd like to see. So um, that's one. But I think we all understand your intent, and there isn't meant to stigmatize or like this is a help the business people. This is it's a key problem, and that we need to address it. Um, I sort of was thought about how you said urging the mayor to address it. Um, you know, I think maybe it should be somehow that we as the council, how do we bring ideas forward? How do we brainstorm it? Um, it's great if he says, hey, I can handle this. You guys continue on. Um, but I think otherwise, I, I think somehow we are a good forum to bring ideas forward and around the island and, and how do we brainstorm this idea? Um, how do we address the problem of people not having a home, um, and which is often combined with, not as Ms. Poindexter pointed out, the health issues, the vocational issues, each of this. Do we have some kind of forum out there and, and sort of really take a, a proactive approach because it's only going to, um, you know, get, get worse. So I appreciate it. I think that in some ways we can, as a council do it and I also find one thing I kept people kept saying during um, the budget to me is you're not asking all of us for all of our ideas and you're not asking the employees to come with all their ideas and we've got a lot of good ideas and how can we so I'm asking you if there's some way to also that we provide a forum for different groups or different so that people all over the island can hear those and respond so uh, I'll support whatever you want to do and and I do understand your intent, and we can all write things better, but then we get half as much done. I just wanted to comment real fast, Ms. You can respond. Um, there currently is, uh, I mean, not a, not a completely open public, I mean, I'm not going to say open public, but uh, room full discussion. There's, there's individuals within our county um, administration, uh, key stakeholders, whether it's business, whether it's Hope Services, all the different service providers, um, every group you can think of at a roundtable discussion. And a lot of the, I mean, this has been going on for years. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know how long, I can say how long, but we're, it's almost like we're turning our wheels, spokes, and there's, we're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I, that's, that's the frustrating part. So that, that's the only so thing. There is, there, is, there is a discussion going on. There is a, a roundtable discussion currently happening on that. So okay. Just but what I just want to clarify then what I'm saying is can we get that right here? So it's on TV five times and really get everybody else, not you know all of us and everyone else, up on that discussion. So, I mean, this is something maybe you or Ms. Poindexter are involved or current. Um, but I'm just trying to get it that we have so much intelligence on this island and we happen to be the platform that can go on TV and get it out there. Just so that's what I'm information real fast. And, um, the be it for the resolve at the bottom, it, it also brings up to share with the council the issues and challenges the county faces in dealing with the chronic homelessness and to inform the council of measurable actions it can take to address within Hawaii County. So I put that in there for that specific reason, to address the council and that open platform. 
Thank you, Mr. Kern. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you, Mr. Knuha, for bringing this up. Um, I agree that the uh, this is a challenging conversation. Um, but I think the mayor's office is actually one of the right places to put it into because he has the access to the departments and he can ha put certain individuals to, to, to work on various things and to come up with strategies and then bring it to us to talk about that and create that dialogue, which is exactly what I was going to say. Mr. Knuha already said it, that it's, you know, have the mayor's office shall have a representative appear before the council in 45 days, which begins to create that dialogue and we expand on that dialogue. Um, I don't think this is, this is clearly not a law saying you can or you cannot. This is saying there's an issue, let's work on it. The mayor's office is where it starts and then we get to work on it with the mayor's office so we both have policy and administration because that's what it's going to take as well as bringing in any outside sources and, and help from outside, outside entities. So uh, thank you, Mr. I support this. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Ms. Ford? Thank you. Well, this is going to really seem strange to everyone. I'm not usually defending the mayor. <laughs> However, I'm going to tell you the mayor has been addressing this, and so has the previous mayor. Some of the things that we've done is build a temporary shelter, a temporary housing um, for homeless people in the old industrial center in Mr. Kanua's district. He knows about this. I'm not dropping new information on him. Um, it only has 31 beds, and that's part of the problem. We just don't have enough facilities to handle uh, the kinds of problems that we're dealing with. When I had District 7, which didn't quite go up to um, the uh, Kona Village, but my district was just south of it. It's where it ended. And of course, all the problems of the village migrated into my district as well. And I was getting calls from people about the unsanitary. Um, well, how do I how do I be delicate about this? Some of the um, behaviors, unsanitary behaviors that were going on, that were disrupting the businesses. And, and frankly, I don't want this to sound. I don't want this discussion to sound like it's the businesses that are just up in arms. Although they have a right to be up in arms because none of us would want some of these behaviors going on in our property, whether it was our home or our business. Um, so I would first like to call Mr. Ashita Ford uh, for the public's information on, on some basic laws. And then I want to talk about some of the things that we could potentially do, not because um, I'm going to support this, this this thing, but I have to say the mayor is doing as much as he can, and we've got laws that are against us, So, um, and not the ones I'm going to ask Mr. Ashita about. Mr. Ashita, would you identify yourself, please? Uh, good morning, Lincoln Ashita Corporation Council. Thank you. Do we, in this county, or, or uh, do we have a panhandling law specific to the county, or are we under some kind of a state law for panhandling, anti-panhandling? I believe there is a uh, county ordinance that covers that. Can you bring your microphone up? You're so soft-spoken today. Sure. Uh, we have a county ordinance. Against panhandling? Yes, well, that deals with panhandling. Okay, thank you. And loitering? Well, I don't believe that there is a single loitering um, ordinance per se, but there are various provisions in the code and state law HRS that deal with um, um, what you've termed loitering. Okay. So do, does a loitering law need to be beefed up in some way in the county to maybe address some of these issues? Well, we need to be careful about that because there is the constitutionally uh, protected right of uh, freedom of association and gathering, which is always a concern when you pass legislation that uh, restricts or otherwise directs uh, movement of individual pers of persons. Okay. It has to be tagged to a compelling government interest in the need for that enforcement. Okay. If you're, your question, do we need to beef that up? Um, I think 
constitutional law would um, wisely dictate that that question should be asked fact specifically. In other words, not generally should we beef it up to impose county-wide blackout restrictions, but for this particular situation, case, uh, uh, location, okay. uh, will it pass constitutional right. muster? That's undoubtedly a discussion for another time. The other behavior, the unhealthy sanitary behaviors that we all know are going on, um, is that addressed under some kind of a health issue law or is it under some kind of a, a loitering or vandalism type law? Well, there are state laws uh, regarding, um, well, there are both probably both administrative as well as criminal laws in HRS that deal with, if you're talking about uh, um, you know, public uh, urination, defecation, that, that kind of um, um, thing. Like I said, they're, they're probably covered both administratively to DOH as well as, uh, I have to believe that they reside somewhere also in the penal code. I, I don't have an independent recollection of what those sections are. County, you know, I've never really looked at that. Um, I can look. I, I don't. Uh, I don't have. A, um, it, nothing pops up in my mind that yes, we have something that that covers that. Okay. I don't think it's necessary that we know that answer today. So, but thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, let me comment on a couple of other issues that we that I know about from working with some of the uh, businesses in Kailua Village, and I'm sure you have the same problems in Hilo or any place else. Um, not enough, not enough bed space in emergency or temporary shelters to handle people, and some individuals will refuse to go into those shelters because of substance abuse, and they, these shelters require that they be clean, as in not using. They have to be sober, dry, whatever you want to call it, before they're allowed into the shelter. So that leaves a large population of people who are having either mental issues, substance abuse issues, or the two together who cannot legally get into a shelter and get housing. So we have a tremendous need.